I know what you're thinking as it pertains to Ukraine trying to repel the Ruskies with the $60 billion that uh, a lot of Republicans and all the Democrats want to send to Ukraine still pending. Who is going to fill the void left by the United States at present in order to finance a proper gender-inclusive demining operation in Ukraine. What? I know, I know that's what... Oh, that's such a pressing issue. I, I ...is on people's mm-hmm. minds, and so I just wanted to update. There is an answer to that question. In Canada, the um, fifth-grade drama teacher they made, the uh, prime minister there, and his government are going to step in. They're providing um, $4 million dollars to Ukraine to fund gender inclusive mine uh, sweeping operations. Gender inclusive mine sweeping operations. Yeah, this is part of the three billion dollars in total aid, but I mean this is very specific here. Uh, it's you know a lot line itemed, um, very considered, well planned. This is part of the strategy to uh, I don't know make Putin laugh. The uh, gender inclusive demining. Mm -hmm. Uh, The project uh, aims to safeguard the lives and livelihoods of Ukrainians, including women and internally displaced persons, by addressing the threat of explosive ordnance present across the vast areas of the country. Project activities include conducting non-technical surveys and subsequent manual clearance in targeted communities, providing capacity building to key national stakeholders, and establishing a gender and diversity working group to promote gender transformative mine action in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, that's really where the rubber meets the road. This is where uh, it's going to turn one way or the other. The war effort is whether or not the gender transformative demining goes well or doesn't. I mean, if you want to have a laugh at the Canadians expense, be careful. Be careful of that plank in your eye, Americans, because, of course, at the same time, the um, policymakers, the great strategic national security thinkers in Canada are cooking this up, I, I assume in conjunction with Zelensky, or he's just saying, just give me money. You can put it in by any line item you want, and we'll use it for what we need. Uh, but at the same time, that's going on. Yeah. Animatronic Anthony Blinken, our Secretary of State, has uh, penned a memo that directs State Department employees to refrain from using gendered terms such as mother, father, and manpower. Stop it. It always lasts to know. I mean, this is so like five years ago for the Ivy League. But anyway, at least the State Department's finally catching up. A uh, a, a memo entitled Modeling DEIA. Don't forget the A. I always tell people that. Biden encourages colleagues at the State Department to use gender-neutral language wherever possible to show respect and avoid misunderstandings. Obviously, you also identify employees by their preferred pronouns in emails and when introducing themselves in emails, if they are comfortable with being referenced generically as themselves, of course. Mothers are mothers, and fathers are not birthing people. um, I earned that right. Parent. Parent one, uh, adult unit, okay. uh, assuming an individual's gender identity simply based on their appearance or name can be problematic, says Secretary of State Blinken, because oh. it can convey a harmful and exclusionary message. I mean, um, President Xi and Putin and the mullahs in Tehran, they must be quaking oh, yeah. at the strength this memo belies. I know our enemies are watching this craziness, too. Uh, well, I yeah. lost. I lost hope in the Ukrainian war when they had that Ukrainian transgender American spokesperson, Sarah Ashton Carrillo. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, how disgusting was that? That's what made well, me think that this is a clown show. For uh, more on uh, this and uh, perhaps some other serious matters, please be joined by Brigadier General Anthony Tata. He's former Under Secretary of Defense for Policy. He uh, served our military for 28 years, including which included commands in the 82nd Airborne, 101st Airborne, and the 10th Mountain Division, as well as operations in Afghanistan, Bosnia, Croatia, North Macedonia, Kosovo, Panama, and Haiti. 
He currently leads his consulting firm, Tata Leadership Group, and is the managing partner of Boundary Channel Partners. He's got a new book. He's also a novelist. His new book is entitled The Phalanx Code, a Garrett Sinclair novel. General Tata, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, Dan and Amy. Great to be with y'all. You know, the title of my next book is going to be Gender Transformative Mind Action. I I think that's a real catchy headline. And, um, I'm, I'm going to get to work on it right away. Well, I mean, it's a it's, long concern it's, of mine. It's cutting edge. I mean, it there's is. no doubt. Um, so you're so hip. Yeah, you want to, You definitely want to stay up with what is au courant. Um, so uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 absurd. It would seem to the layman like me. But by this, and 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 here's what you're going to get when you ask like people this. You know, I, I don't want to talk about. It. It's a distraction. Let's not. It, it, yeah, it is a distraction, but uh, but it's being um, perpetrated. These distractions are being perpetrated by the people who are supposed to not be distracted. So that's a distraction to me as the taxpayer and the concerned American that this is what Lloyd Austin and General Milley and Secretary of State Blinken and our partners in the West spend so much time worrying about and, frankly, even attaching money to it in the context of a war effort in Eastern Europe. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. You know, um, whether it was my career in the paratroopers and uh, leadership positions around uh, the world or as the undersecretary uh, performing the duties there, um, I, the, the policy of the United States should be anchored on one thing, and that's the national defense strategy, and uh, what really gets to vital interests of the United States. What are those vital interests that we must protect and uh, all this all this stuff is a distraction quite frankly and and the, that people even pretend to be serious and are putting this in documents and so forth um, tells you the level of, of uh, unseriousness of of folly that is happening um, and whether it was Afghanistan and uh, the the way things unraveled there um, all the way up to Think about Ukraine. Um, this uh, Blinken offered Zelensky a ride out on the eve of the invasion. Remember that, and and nobody talks about it. Uh, but uh, uh, think if um, another president had offered a ride out, to, had offered to decapitate the Ukrainian government on the eve of the Russian invasion. Uh, um, the instincts of this this um, uh, you know Zelensky said uh, you know famously, I, I don't need. Uh, a ride. I need ammo, and uh, the, you know the, the the folly of this administration. They are they are just unserious people uh, doing unserious things uh, that uh, have serious consequences. And uh, you know, in part, that's what the phalanx code tries to capture: is the political division right now that we're seeing in the country. And it's not a political book; it's a it's a novel, right? But um, it's hard to write a novel where you're not. Uh, accurately capturing the backdrop of America that is really divided. And the protagonist, Garrett Sinclair, who commands and leads soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, uh, is asking himself the question, is their service, is my service worth it? Um, and and uh, when, when you have unserious people leading the country, that's essentially the theme of the phalanx code and he's put in this dilemma of man versus mission as we talk about in the military so um it's uh and it you know deals with techno fascism and and that kind of thing as well but uh uh it's uh we're we're in a tough position right now and we you know it's it's best to to make fun of it and laugh at it because it's so damn serious pardon my french well, you know, and maybe this would they will inspire some Americans too, including our men and women in in uh, uniform, to see the sacrifices of others. And I don't know if you saw it, but uh, no less a uh, seminal figure in American history than Hunter Biden has said that he is willing to maintain his sobriety to save democracy saying that I have something much bigger than even myself at stake. We're in the middle of a fight for the future of democracy. So if Hunter Biden can refrain from using crack or cocaine in order to save democracy, I mean, think what the rest of us should be able to do. Well, I mean, when he said that, uh, I think there was a little dusting of white powder. Maybe he was eating sugar donuts um, (laughs) when he was talking. But, uh, uh, you know, that clown show, I I mean— 
uh, <laughs> as just the epitome of, of corruption in this co- uh, country. And, and uh, you know, how incompetent do you have to be to leave your laptop with all the evidence of your dad's corruption um, in some, you know, computer shop? <laughs> so do you think Biden, so, President Biden, uh, has been compromised then by Ukraine, by China? Because of Absolutely. Uh, there's, there, there's, there's no question in my mind uh, that uh, he, you know, his foreign policy decision making is based upon uh, the level to which uh, you know these people are exerting pressure on him. Um, and and you know, quite frankly, you know, I, I know Lloyd Austin very, very well. I served directly uh, for him twice. I was a battalion commander in the 82nd Airborne when he was a brigade commander, and. I was his deputy commanding general when he was a commanding general of the 10th Mountain Division. And, 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 you know, this report that came out yesterday or whenever it came out saying, you know, that was ordered by the person who made all the mistakes, um, saying the report said they made no mistakes. Uh, there's no accountability in this administration, and that comes straight from Biden and how compromised he is because he can't hold anybody accountable. He can't break the narrative. He has to maintain um, – uh, that everything is awesome. Uh, nobody's been fired over Afghanistan. Nobody's been fired over the Secretary of Defense disappearing for for a week. Uh, even you know, and I, I pray pray to God he's he's healthy and all that. I know him very very well. He's a good man. He served our country, but he also made an egregious mistake. That think about it. If yeah. if that had happened under Trump, uh, the the you know either you know they'd be calling for Article Twenty Five on Trump or you know, calling for the head of the Secretary of Defense or whatever. But, you know, this administration gets such a pass, and nobody's pressing the issue of the compromise that uh, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, uh, you know, the Biden family has, uh, uh, you know, there's so much evidence out there, but they got to maintain this narrative or, or, or because it's all about power. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about power for these people. Well, you know, again, in government, um, mistakes make themselves and our border secure. And uh, that's all you need to know. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, but I did, I did since, since uh, China was raised, you know, Peter Schweitzer, the author of Clinton Cash and uh, Secret Empires, he's got a new book out called Blood Money. And it really talks a lot about China, particularly what uh, he sees per some of their own military documents as their strategy borrowing from Sun Tzu, to defeat your enemy without fighting. And he specifically points to uh, fentanyl. He points to uh, efforts that the Chinese make to uh, you know, go after our soft underbelly, if as it were, um, the Confucius Institutes at our colleges, you know, sort of the indoctrination piece of it. And then we have this other curious case, uh, speaking of the border, where you have all these military-age uh, Chinese nationals that are coming in mainly through uh, San Diego without families. And, you know, I, I don't know what's uh, exactly happening there, but you have some reasonable suspicions about it. And I just wonder sort of what your perspective is on all of these things happening simultaneously and, you know, your understanding of the geopolitics of China's uh, global interests. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's interesting. I did a signing for Phalanx Code last night in Vero Beach, Florida, and I had dinner afterwards with some very close friends of uh, Peter's. And, and and Peter's actually uh, coming to be with them uh, tonight or tomorrow. And and they said you can't believe what he's going to re- reveal in the next uh, you know few weeks. And and so I, I'm uh, you know I used to, I, I I know Peter and um, uh, he's done uh, such a tremendous uh, service to this country into um, uh, democracy in our republic uh, by uh, continuing to expose this, despite the mainstream media's uh, you know, efforts to block and conceal and deny. Um, uh, I, I think the convergence uh, between Ukraine and China uh, and, and, and the corruption of the Biden family is uh, playing out before our very eyes, this war in, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, the, the continuous efforts uh, to uh, fund this thing are, uh, uh, you know, it, it's never ending. There's no diplomacy. And, it's, and there was no effort to get in front of it when uh, Putin was building up on the border. Uh, think about that. Why was that? Why was Blinken just uh, silent on the whole thing? Why was there no engagement 
Uh, it's almost as if they wanted it to happen. And and I'll tell you, there are two reasons. One is because um, uh, Biden's corrupt and he's compromised uh, by Ukraine, in my opinion. And two is he fundamentally broke NATO in Afghanistan and uh, by leaving in the way he did. And and so uh, when when you leave 29 other NATO nations there hanging to fend for themselves, there were some angry people to uh, that angry NATO nation. So what better way to, quote unquote, unify NATO than to have a common threat uh, and not reveal how broken NATO actually is and how much he did to break NATO? Secondly, on China, uh, the 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 passivity that that we are seeing here is is, uh, uh, you know, part of the corruption and compromise as well. Uh, The um, oh, that's that's I mean, that's that's. I mean, it's interesting and disturbing. And now the, the other piece of it, which is sort of a combination of uh, of domestic and um, and foreign, given the reporting from uh, journalists like Matt Taibbi and Mike Schellenberger, is the surveillance state. And this is also a part of the backdrop of your new novel, The Phalanx Code. Uh, and, and what we're learning sort of. Hey, Brigadier General, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Hello. Yeah, we lost Dan for a second, but he was asking about uh, tech surveillance and in your new book and how that plays a part in this new book, because I know that you've written 15 military thrillers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, the um, 16, uh, 16th book is Phalanx Code, and uh, I think um, – uh, the uh, Phalanx Corporation in this book is, I think, the worst instincts of digital carnivores like Facebook and Google uh, attempting to annihilate uh, a, a company I call Project Optimus, uh, which uh, think Elon Musk and F um, to break through that last defense of individual liberty and freedom in the digital world. That's that's the backdrop here, and our, our hero Garrett Sinclair gets pulled in by Project Optimus to help protect the coders and developers of Project Optimus against the phalanx assassin squads. And and this is techno-fascism at its worst. And, and really, it's not too much of a stretch. Uh, think about uh, the uh, techno-fascism coming from the Biden White House, where you have some 30-year-old calling up, uh, uh, if, if that old, uh, calling up some other 30-year-old at Twitter um, saying, hey, we don't like these accounts. Take them down. Uh, right. We don't like what these are pe- pe- uh, people are saying. Uh, block them or, or mute them or, you know, what, what a shadow ban is the term, I guess. And and then, the, you know, sick and weaponizing the FBI uh, to work with um, Facebook and Twitter and Google to, to uh, create the bias that we see today in, in AI results and that kind of thing. So it's you know, I wrote this book a couple of years ago because you got to turn in a book, and it takes about a year to get it to market. And, How did you know? Uh, for Sam Martin's <laughs> Uh Well, I mean, just research and kind of seeing, you know, all of my experience and and um, working with uh, the uh, uh, yeah as the Under Secretary of Defense and technology and seeing where it's going and. Um, it just was a logical end state, and I spent a lifetime trying to figure out what the bad guys were trying to do to the good guys. And truly, uh, these um, digital carnivores, I call them, um, are, are, are bad guys. They're bad actors in, in, in this digital privacy space. And, and, and if you link a government up with these, uh, you collude the two together, you fuse the two together, that's techno fascism with a jackboot on the neck of the individual. That's anti-American. It's un-American, and it's happening. Um, and that's the epic struggle that we have today in, in in America. And that's what I try to capture in the Phalanx Code. All right, Brigadier General Anthony Tata, we're going to have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll have you back. Maybe appreciate it. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. This is the morning show. More Chicago radio listeners are choosing. This is Chicago's morning answer on AM 560. The answer. A great 